Is it possible to seize other people's property, in particular a temple that does not belong to you? The law of Ukraine, like that of any other country, questions such possibility. The Criminal Code provides for such actions quite a definite reaction of the state in the form of a hefty fine or imprisonment up to three years. However, if you are very patriotic, if you call yourself a chaplain, if you know how to shout loudly glory to Ukraine, you have enough strength to insult, beat and push women and elderly people, then everything is nice. You are free to grab, aren't you? In Kolomea, the saga around the raid or seizure by the Uniates of the Annunciation Church of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has been on for five months now. The temple was built by the Orthodox in 1587, 113 years before the Union in Kolomea emerged. It became a museum in the Soviet period and in 1991 was transferred to the Orthodox on a perfectly legal basis. Greek Catholics say this is their historical temple, but is it really so? In fact, Western Ukraine and later the Right Bank did not join the Union until 1702. Therefore, from a historical point of view, claims with appeals to historical justice in Kolomea have no grounds. This temple, at least 113 years before the events of Joseph Shumlansky's betrayal, used to be Orthodox. The Orthodox community has all the acknowledgement documents from the government, yet it is not the argument for Uniates. Back in June, Greek Catholics, with the help of the radicals of the Black Hundred, broke into the old shrine of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, held their worship there and began to agitate members of the Orthodox community either to join the Union or to get out. The city authorities illegally sealed the temple and created a commission against the law to transfer the temple in jurisdiction to the Uniates. Orthodox believers refused to pass to the Union and filed a lawsuit in court, which they won quite predictably. It would seem that the conflict is over. The Union chaplains who loudly scream about their patriotism will show it in practice and patriotically carry out the court's decision of their native country. However, they appeared to understand patriotism in their own way. The UGCC priest Mikhail Zuba called the court decision a pocket court of a pocket church. Zuba remembered the words of the late head of the UGCC, Lubomir Huzar, that diplomacy, they say, only harms the church. We are playing diplomacy with these Moscow dogs here on our land, and they giggle and rub their hands because, you see, the arbitration court in Ivanovrankivsk is on their side. Do not flatter yourself, Moscow rags. Don't get too excited too soon. And this threat was fulfilled. On October 18th, the Uniates cut off the locks from the doors and captured the Annunciation Cathedral of the UOC. Parishioners of the temple told about threats to their address. He says to me, this is our church, get out of here. We'll cut your throat, cut everybody's throats here. Well, did he say without mincing words? He said exactly, cut your throat. We've cut 400 people and we'll kill you too. Their camera recorded me, it was in the doorway. He closed the door in front of me and did not let me into the temple. And he told me, you have nothing to do here. The Orthodox believers were not allowed to their temple. And those who tried to do video recording felt the heavy hand of Unit spiritual fathers. Stop, stop. 
To prevent the Orthodox from entering the church, tents were put up on the church territory and the Unites themselves called their actions as spiritual Maidan. But the most impressive thing happened on October 22nd, when the Orthodox tried to come to their church to pray. We can see the UOC believers beaten and also literally thrown out of their church premises. And this was done not only by unknown activists in the Balaklava, but also by UGCC priests, Medinsky and Arsenich. The police were inactive at the same time. Everything was done as Zuba had promised in the summer. We'll block everything, we have power. Neither the police nor anyone will help you. A lot of people will come and will block everything. In the end, the Orthodox were isolated, while the road to the temple and the units with the police were blocked with shields. The Greek Catholics supported each other with standard screamers in the spirit of unit Christian love. However, wishing death to enemies for the units is quite normal. After all, the most active initiators of the seizure, chaplains Arsenich Medinsky, have long been known for their completely non-Christian rhetoric. With the enemy there can be no other talk as our forest rules. Our wood rustles with ropes on which the communists will be hanging. Our wood rustles to each other of our hearts urging, take up arms and leave the fear. For each of our soldiers, dozens of them will lie. Glory to the nation, death to the enemies. Although it is small surprise that the police supported traders if the Ukrainian MPs come to support them. We will not let Moscow take the temple built by our ancestors. When believers asked Yuri Timoshenko whether they can freely confess their faith in this land, they received the following answer. You are a member of the parliament. Explain to us if we have an opportunity to have freedom of faith in this land. In this? No, no, no. Well, then, what the Unites consider orthodox in their native land was voiced by UGCC priest Nikolai Medinsky. This is biomass, natural biomass. Now we will not throw pearls of God and Ukrainian truth to Moscow pigs at their feet. It turns out that the goal of the Unites is not just one church in Kolomea, but all temples of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, including the key of Pichars Klavra. We aren't taking this temple from you. We are taking everything from you. We will throw out of our land and from the key of Pichars Klavra. Orthodox residents of Kolomea, ordinary Ukrainians whose ancestors lived on this earth for generations, are insulted and offered to get out of their country according to the standard slogan of nationalists – suitcase, station, Russia. Get out and don't disgrace yourself, you'd better go to Moscow, there you will feel wonderful. This conflict has already been widely publicized by the press. The ivano frankivsky eparchy of the UOC appealed to Petro Poroshenko, Pope Francis and the UNAIDS leadership with a demand to restore the law and the interfaith peace in Kolomea. But what about the leadership of the UGCC? After all, they have repeatedly spoken about peacemaking of their structure. Our church has been for decades, I would say even centuries, doing everything to unite Christians. Svetoslav Shevchuk on his Facebook page stated about the conflict in Kolomea that the Unites do not order anyone and do not recommend to seize temples by force. But after all, it happens actually. You ask why? Shevchuk said that he did not order to cease. True, he didn't. But he did not prohibit to do this. And we all know, what is not forbidden, it's allowed. 
And now Shevchuk's subordinates quite logically interpret his words as a silent encouragement of the raider's seizure. And so they try to justify this illegal act. But it turns out rather awkward. Priest Igor Shaban, the head of the UGCC Commission for Interfaith Dialect, states there was no raid at all. In his opinion, one day the units discovered that the church was open. The first to see this was Greek Catholics, and they just went into the temple. However, even a child understands how much this explanation is ridiculous and false. The correspondent of Mirrors of Columbia Outlet, who was present at the assault, reports On October 18th, the UGCC chaplains, together with the faithful, opened the sealed doors of the church, went inside and performed services. And also, the chaplains opened their doors by themselves and entered inside. But the most interesting is that the seizure can be continued in Western Ukraine already in the churches of the Kiev Patriarchate and Autocephalous Church. Unit priest Mikhail Zabanchala published a list of 110 temples of these denominations, which he believes are to be returned to the Unites. It is interesting that Mikhail Zuba, a raider from Kolomia, completely supported Zabanchala. Well done! We are following you. The Annunciation Church in Kolomia was built in 1587 as an Orthodox Church. It was used by the Uniates from 700 to 1946. During the Soviet period it was a museum, but since 1991 the temple belongs again completely legally to the Orthodox denomination. The UOC believers have all the acknowledgement documents for their ministry in the church. ivano frankivsk district court confirmed the right of the UOC community to serve in the Annunciation Temple. Greek Catholic priests, disregarding the decision of the Ukrainian court, committed an illegal seizure of the shrine. With the help of force and threats, they do not allow the Orthodox to enter their own temple. The same priests claim they are ready to seize other Orthodox churches, including the Kiev Pechersk Lover, as well as churches of the Kiev Patriarchate and Ukrainian Autocephalous Church. The local and central authorities, as well as UGCC leadership, with their silent inaction, feed and support raiding. The Annunciation Church in Kolomia, although a historical monument, is only one of thousands of Orthodox churches. However, if the state does not secure its return, it will be a clear precedent and a powerful signal for the Uniates, meaning it is possible to take over any other temples, and not only those that belong to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And if the state of Ukraine cannot or does not want to protect its Orthodox citizens in one place, the same may well happen in another. However, what will happen to Ukraine itself in this case?